Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. We are almost at the end of mock-up suit building series. Sorry for the delay in releasing this video due to lot of design work and unavailability of the sensors in the market. In this video, I have demonstrated how to design the circuit and the materials required to build the complete mock-up suit. The overall hardware has become little complicated. Keeping track of all those sensors seamlessly in Unreal need more development. In the previous video, I had successfully retargeted two sensors in Unreal and the outcome was quite impressive. If you have not watched the previous video, please check the description below. You can also visit to my Patreon site to read the complete paper and download the source code. Guess what, I have got my first Patreon. Many thanks to Lillian. Hopefully I have pronounced the name correctly. If not, please forgive me. This video is also sponsored by JLC PCB, who is making the PCBs for me. I'll show you how easy to order custom made PCBs with them. So let's get into it. If you are new to this channel, please consider to give a like and subscribe. That means a lot to me. At first, let's look at the building blocks of the mockup suit. In total, there will be 17 BNO055 sensor will be placed in different bones on human rigid body. Now question is how many master controller I need to handle 17 sensors data capture and transmission. By master controller I mean the combination of ESP32 and TCA9548A. To get to the exact number let's play around 3 different architectural building blocks. Architecture 1 which is all the 17 sensor will be handled by one master controller. This option will reduce the price drastically with the cost of the performance in terms of FPS. FPS means frames per second. Architecture 2 which is 8 into 1 plus 9 means two master controllers. That means 8 sensors will be handled by one master controller and other master controller will handle 9 sensors. Altogether 17. Architecture 3 which is 4 into 3 plus 5 means 4 master controllers. That means 4 sensor will be handled by one master controller and one of the master controller will handle 5 sensors. Architecture 4 All 17 sensor will be separated. It means each BNO will have one controller. There will be no need of TCA9548A in this case. This option will be most expensive option, however there is no cabling or wiring is required. To select the perfect architecture, I need to build all the 4 architecture and test it. Before that, let's look at how each BNOs will be integrated with the master controller and accordingly I will select the number of master controller required. Every endpoints will have a BNO 055, which will be connected to a master controller module via USB. That means I need a board with a BNO055 and a USB type A female socket integrated. To do that, I have created a small circuit diagram using Eagle Cat. In the schematic diagram, I have a board where both BNO055 and USB female type A socket is assembled. As per USB type A pin specification, there are four ports identified by VCC, D- or data negative, D+, or data positive, and ground. To comply I2C, I have mapped D- pin to BNO's SCL and D plus pin to BNO's STA. VCC pin I have connected to BNO's VIN or voltage input and ground I have connected to BNO's ground. I also have kept the provision to change the BNO's address by jumpering the ADR with VIN. The size of the board is 42mm by 20mm, which is little more than the size of BNO. Here is the final preview of the board. From the manufacturing option, you can see the 3D view of the board along with the dimensions. That's all about the sensor endpoints. I have uploaded the design and the Gerber file in my Patreon site. Let's look at the cost. Each BNO 055 cost me 50 Australian dollars. USB Type 2 female SMT costed me 83 cents. PCB design and manufacturing costed me 27 cents. This is what I will get it done by JLC PCB. Total cost of each BNO endpoint is 51 Australian dollars. That means all 17 endpoints will cost me 867 Australian dollars. Now it's time to make the controller. Out of 4 different master controller architecture, at first let's look at the cheapest option where I will have one master controller connected with 17 sensors endpoint. This design is little complicated. 
accommodating all the 17 USBs and two TCA I2C multiplexer along with Husa 32 feather in one board is tricky. Somehow I have managed to make a compact board with two layers. Here in the schematic design you can see I have created two layers board. The sheet 1 or the top layer of the board has Husa 32 and TCA 95A along with 8 USB female ports. TCA's SCL and SDA is connected to Husa's SCL and SDA pin and each of the USBs D plus and D minus is connected to TCA's SDA and SCL pins. TCA has 8 channels so all the 8 USBs are connected to corresponding TCA's output I2C pin. I have extended the battery option of the external JC socket via a pull-up switch so that I can switch on and switch off the power as and when I need. On the other side or the bottom of the board, I have kept one TCA 9548A plus 8 USBs. Each of the USBs D positive and D negative is connected to TCS, SDA and SCL numbered pin. This TCS, SDA and SCL is connected to other side of the board where my Husa 32 will be plugged in. I also have kept an option to change the address of TCA. This TCS address will be 71. I must change one of the TCS address as both the TCS are connected to the same I2C bus of Husa 32. So altogether 16 sensors are accommodated. The 17th sensor I have kept it in the sheet 2 or the bottom side which is directly connected to Husa's SDA and SCL pin. That means Husa's I2C pin will be connected with two TCA and one BNO055 directly. TCA's address will be 70 and 71 and BNO's address will be 29. Please note the default BNO's address is 28. As I am connecting the BNO's after TCA and directly to Husa, I cannot have same address for 17th one. So one of the endpoint BNO need to have a different address. In the 3D view of the board, you can see all the wire connections. It is complicated. In the manufacturing view of the board, dimension wise the overall board size is not big. It is as same as the credit card size. This architecture is the cheapest one. I need one Husa 32, two TCA and one battery pack along with 17 sensors. Let's look at the cost now. The Husa 32 cost me 30 Australian dollars. TCA 9548A cost me 10 Australian dollars. USB Type A female SMT for all 17 is 14 Australian dollars. PCB manufacturing cost me $1.10. Battery pack $12 plus some resistors which are negligible in price. Total master controller cost will be 55 Australian dollars. If this architecture is selected, the total cost of the suit will come approximately 950 Australian dollars which is 680 US dollars as per today's exchange rate. This cost includes all the cabling and excludes the 3D printing of the enclosures. Design files are also uploaded in the Patreon. Now let's look at 18 to 1 plus 9 port option. This port design is similar to the 17 port one. Only difference is number of USBs and TCAs on the board. In this case, I need two of this board which can go either of the back pockets. Each board has TCA connected to a Husa 32 via I2C bus along with one extra USB. The sheet 1 or the top layer of the board has Husa 32 and TCA 9548A along with 8 USB female ports. TCS SCL and SDA is connected to the Husa's SCL and SDA pin and each of the USBs D positive and D negative is connected to TCS SDA and SCL pin. TCA multiplexer has 8 channels so all the 8 USBs are connected to corresponding TCS output I2C pin. I have extended the battery option to the external JST socket via a pull up switch so that I can switch on and switch off the power as and when I need. This is exactly same as 17 port master controller. Here is the board 3D view where all the wire connections are done. Dimension wise this board is 59 by 83 mm which is same like 17 port 1. This is also a cost effective solution as I need 2 Husa 32, 2 TCA multiplexer and 2 battery packs along with 17 sensors. Cost wise this architecture is little higher than the 17 port master controller architecture which is approximately $1000 or in US dollars $720. Depending upon the battery life and the performance corresponding architecture I will select.
Before moving to 4 into 3 plus 1 option, let's look at the most expensive architecture, which is no TCA multiplexer, one HUSA will be directly connected with one BNO. It means I need 17 HUSA 32 board connected to 17 individual BNO sensors. This architecture will increase the price, but no wiring is required. In the schematic diagram, you can see I have directly connected BNO 055 with HUSA 32 SDA and SCL pin. As both the board size is same, I had some difficulties to place the boards in two layers. And hence, I have placed both the boards side by side. The overall size is 45 by 53 mm, which is not much. If I consider going to this path, then to reduce the cost, I will probably discard the HUSA 32 board and directly use ESP32 with BNO. This is most simple option and completely wireless module. However, when 17 different threads, data will arrive in Unreal in parallel. What will happen in the performance, I need to test. In this option, I will get maximum battery life, almost 2 to 3 days or more. Cost wise, I need 17 HUSA 32, which is 518 Australian dollars, 17 BNO 055, which will be 850 Australian dollars, plus some resistors and batteries, 17 batteries I mean which will be 212 Australian dollars. If this architecture is selected, then the total cost of the suit will be approximately 1580 Australian dollars, which is 1116 dollars as of today exchange rate. Now it's time to make the PCBs. PCB means printed circuit board. A printed circuit board or PC board or PCB is a non-conductive material with conductive lines printed or etched. Electronic components are mounted on the board and the traces connect the components together to form a working circuit or assembly. I have chosen JLC PCB for the PCB manufacturing. JLC PCB is China's largest PCB prototype manufacturer. Offers 24 hours quick turn PCB prototype, SMT assemblies and reliable small batch PCB production. This video is sponsored by them. In a while, I'll show you how easy to get the PCB manufacturing done along with all the steps including quality control and manufacturing with deliveries. To order the PCB, I need the Jerver files or the design files. I have created all the three prototypes Jerver jipped files. To order PCB, go to jlcpcb.com and click on order now. To order 5 PCB boards, they only charge 2.7 Australian dollars and the turnaround time is only 1 to 2 days. You need to pay for the shipping. JLC PCB uses DHL Express for me and the shipping charges are 26 Australian dollars. Once you get to the order page, just upload the Jerva zip file. You can select some of the parameter as per your choice. In my case, I have only selected purple board color, rest everything I have left as default. Once done, you can save it in the cart. The minimum quantity of each board is 5. You can add multiple boards in a single order to save some time and the shipping cost. Finally, go to the secure checkout and select the shipping address and shipping method. Before making the payment, I have submitted the order for review and if the boards are approved, then only I will make the payment for building. From their website, you can see the multiple layer and the board design. Once the board design is approved, you can make the payment for building the board. There are several stages are followed to build the board. JLC PCB's process is quite transparent and they update all the substatus against every milestone, which appears to the site as well. Once the production process is completed, they will send it to delivery. Currently my PCBs are printed and it is in transit to me. Meanwhile, till I receive my PCBs, I have ordered the materials which will go into the PCB. Those are listed in the bill of material file or BOM file. The main items of the bill of material I have ordered from DigiKey. USB type to female SMT, this will be soldered both in BNO boards and in the master controller board of HUSA32. Zero resistance jumper to change the TCA and BNO055 address. 16 pin and 12 pin header connector to mount the HUSA32 on the PCB. This will increase the height of the HUSA32 from the board so that I can accommodate the TCA underneath. Surface mount slide switch to on and off the power. GST connector header surface mount to attach the battery with HUSA. USB A or USB Type A plug. This is the main part of the USB. For soldering, I have ordered following items from the DigiKey as well. Soldering iron 60W, smooth flow low temperature soldering paste, 
Artwizer Point and Micro, Smooth Flow Truck Lux, Pump Pure Touch Isopropanol, D-Shoulder Braid Resin, and of course Solder Wire. Other than these items, I also have ordered some of the items from Core Electronics Australia. Those are Adafruit 9DOF Absolute Orientation IME Fusion Breakout Board or BNO055, TCA 9548A I2C Multiplexer, Adafruit Husa 32 ESP32 Feather Board, Polymer Lithium Ion Battery. I am using 3.7V 2000mAh battery. Some of the materials I ordered from Amazon. Those are RJ11 telephone extension cable, 100 feet black. This cable has 4 cores and the color of the code same as I2C color code, which is red, black, yellow and green. I will be using this cable to connect master controller with BNO055 endpoint via USB Type-A mail connector. A OS stripper pillar, plush cutter, pre-cut multicolor heat sink pack kit, heat gun or hot air heating tool. Finally, I have also purchased a 3D printer from Creality.com for the master controller and BNO endpoint enclosure. We'll talk more about this in upcoming episodes. All the item leads with the links are there in the description below and in my Patreon page. While I am waiting for my delivery of the PCBs and the materials, I tried to build a small prototype of 4 BNO connecting to Rosa 32 via TCA. To build that, I have used Adafruit Prema Proto half size breadboard PCB. The structure is as same as like breadboard, only difference is in this board you can solder all the components. Here in the board, I have soldered my Husa 32 and TCA. In the TCA's I2C pin, I have soldered a 4 RJ11 cable to the board. And the other side of the cable, I have added a USB Type-A female socket. Rest all the connections are similar to my previous board design. At the other side, I have soldered RJ11 cable directly to BNO055 I2C pin. Simple design, I will cover more on this in the later episode when I receive my PCBs. In the Arduino code, I have added two more sensor objects, called it hand underscore L and clavicle underscore L. And then, by selecting corresponding TCA port via TCA select function, I am collecting all the data and packing to the JSON object before sending. As I already have done the structured coding, adding more sensor in the Arduino code is become simple. At the Unreal side, in the third person anim BP, at first I have added another transform modify bone function to update the clavicle and hand bones. To get the values, I have added two variables called clavicle rotator underscore L and hand rotator underscore L. Don't forget to select the bone from the drop down and the type of the modification as replace existing. Finally, in the UDP controller human blueprint, I have added two more case statement hand underscore L and clavicle underscore L. Those I have pointed to the corresponding set function of the rotator. Simple modification. Now on playing the blueprint, I can see the data started coming from the sensor and updating the corresponding rotator variables. Before I placed it to myself and try it out, I have tested the battery usage. With 4 sensor, the battery charges last for 12 hours. I have used LiPo 3.7V 2000mAh battery to test it. That's all from this video, a big thank you to my first Patreon and JLC PCB for sponsoring. In the next video, I will demonstrate the PCBs and how to make own USB cable and connect the sensor with other USB plug. Still, there are a lot more things to be done to complete the mock-up suit. The most expensive architecture is less hassle-free as it is completely wireless. Currently, the availability of BNO055 is an issue. Therefore, looking at my stock, I will try 17 sensor master controller board with 4 sensor endpoint with 4 HUSA and BNO055 individual models. I think that will be the best way to compare most expensive versus less expensive solution. I am getting a lot of response from you and it is really encouraging for me. A big thank you to all of you. Some of the things might be easily or efficient way to achieve that I might not ever off. If you could point out those tips and tricks or better way of doing it will be a great help. So please comment and help me out. On that note, I am finishing this video. I hope you like the progress and the strategy of the development. Please stay tuned for such interesting topic and the solution. Till then, stay safe and take care. Thank you for watching.